guys, I got a lot to do today and I found a video that I made when I was doing things just on Facebook. And so that's what we're going to do today. It's called Embodied Cognition. Does it prove creation? So I'm sorry for the, the, the quality of the video. I didn't have a lot of the stuff I have now. Um, <clears throat> so enjoy. Let me know what you think. And uh, remember to pray and read your Bible, guys. There's lots of stuff going on. There is so much going on in this world out here. They can be hard to parse it sometimes. But if you look at it through the lens of the Bible, talk to God about it, you will get a direction. You will know where to go. So without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Okay, looks like I'm live, guys. Sorry if it's a little... Alright, looks like everything's coming. Okay, so I wanted to talk just real basically about embodied cognition and artificial intelligence. So I was watching a video that was a Jordan Peterson talk in Oxford. And in Oxford, he said that the only way robotics got off the basically got his running start was because it was made um, it was embodied it was given a face hands they made the robots like us okay so I thought that was interesting it's not the first time I've heard it before and I, I tried to go out and find some actual links to stuff that you could read to figure it out okay so I found this article it's actually a WordPress thing, so I don't think it's an article, it's a blog. Uh, Being in the World blog, an online resource for studying embodiment and corporality. So let's say, let's see, what is this? this, this, this. Talk, it's talking about a New York Times article. I'm trying to find. Okay, here's what it says If cognition is fundamentally embodied, then it's no surprise that intelligence hasn't emerged in robots. Before you can have real, versatile intelligence, you have to master simple motor skills in non-structured environments. It turns out our ability to do things like reach and grab for objects or walk through a changing environment has more to do with higher cognition than anything else. Okay? And so far, we can't even put together a robot with the same motor capabilities of a newborn or a cockroach for that matter. Now this, I tried to find a date on this and I think it's 2009. So at a certain point, we weren't able to get robots to do what we wanted them to do. Okay. Let's see. We can post. Let's see if I can do this. I gotta go down. Okay, that's it. That's all there is. On the bright side, there's no foreseeable danger of assassin terminators taking over the world either. So there's that. <laughs> So I will have that in the links on Facebook right quick. I'm just going to put this up here. Thanks. So there we go. So I read that. Okay. And then I found a paper, like, I'm not sure if it's a paper. It's an embodied cognition for autonomous interactive robots. Okay. And this says, in neuroscience and psychology, psychology an opposite trend developed, EC or embodied cognition was found to be applicable in an increasing number of more sophisticated cog cognitive tasks. Embodied mechanisms were shown capable of modeling abstract thought, language, mathematical reasoning and learning, as well as social and moral decision making. And embodied representations could also account for aspects of social interaction, communication and coordination. So this uh, suggests certain things to me. Let me... Uh, Continue with what I'm reading so you guys can read. So you guys can kind of go with me, okay? So these findings suggest a reevaluation of higher level artificial cognition and of autonomous interactive robotics in EC terms. Currently, many of the works in autonomous interactive robots suffer from the drawbacks of abstract symbol systems, such as discreteness rigid structure and slowness. At the same time, EC suggests new models and theories applicable to social interaction. We therefore propose a renewed view of EC in the context of 
autonomous robots aimed for human interaction, especially where fluid activity with the robots surrounding the human counterparts is desired. Specifically, we believe that the idea of modal perceptual representation, the integration of action, uh, uh -huh, action, perception, trying to see, and cognition, thinking, and a notion of simulation-based top-down perceptual biasing could inform the design of such robots. So in other words, these robots have to act and think like us in order for them to interact with the world. Okay, and that, that's what that says to me. So when you're looking at this, all right, and I'm, you're reading your Bible, and you're looking at this. I'm going to put this, um, if you're on the Facebook page, it's just going to be in the, in the chat for whoever wants it. That is a PDF, so you might have to download it. I'm not sure. But looking at that, okay, is that, thank you for all the hearts. I don't know who's giving them to me, but thank you very much on Periscope. So looking at that, we have to we have to consider, or no, you don't have to, but this is what I did, okay? So I considered this in two ways. One being that robotics, as we see them now, where they're talking to you, you can feed them information and they become a certain way. Uh, Sophia is the one that Iran says, you know, hey, you're Iranian now, we give you your nationality. Excuse me is only able to do all of the things that she's able to do because she is shaped like a human being, which to me infers that you need to be a human being in order to interact with at this most successful rate. Hmm. Let me back up. How do I say this? Okay. I've never, I've never said this out loud or written it down. So I'm, I'm just sort of thinking it through right now. In order for us to interact with the world, at the successful rate that we have, where we're, we're like a top species, we have all of this um, technology. The world, you have to be, you have to be us, basically. You have to look like us. You have to see things like us, things like that. In the Bible, it it makes it quite clear, and I'm going to have to find the verses that when God made the world, it was good. When He made man, it was good. He made all of this for not only Himself but for us to enjoy. So he, he had to make the world to, into such a way that we could interact with it. Okay. And like I said, this is the first time I've ever really even said it or written it down. I have never written it down. This is just something I'm kind of working through. So when I look at this, I look at that the success of robotics came from embodiment. Okay. We, they had to give it eyes, ears. They had to give it hands, feet, nose things like that in order to interact with the world at large. This is not, I know in, in some of these, they're mentioning that it is about, um, it's about just being able to interact with people. But if you look at early robotics, then those things also just picking up a ball, just moving across the, moving across the room. All right. In order for something to interact with the world, it has to be built like us. And that to me says, okay, so this whole thing was created. It We fit together like puzzle pieces, humanity and the world. The world was created in such a way that you, you need humanity to interact with it correctly. You, The robots right now, when you see just, you know, just when they're put up on stage and they're asked a question, right? What do they say? Well, are you going to, you know, take us over? And their answer is, well, we'll remember our friends. If you're our friends, we'll remember you, and you don't have anything to worry about. Now, a robot, still being a machine, can only say what it's programmed to say. Why would you program it to say that? Okay, Sophia is programmed to learn or say what it's programmed to say. All right is now starting to talk about women's rights and things like that. There's a lot of people who also believe that we need the robotics because that's how the Antichrist is going to come in. I'm not sure if that's the case. I'm not sure, like Alex Jones says, it's just there to take away our humanity so we can't interface with the world the same way. Since I believe everything is created by God, 
And I see through robotics that in order to successfully interact with this world, you have to be created in God's image like we are. You have to have that image, even if it is only an echo in mechanics, then that just to me says, okay, we, we are created. Not only are we created, we're part of the fabric of, of this whole universe. It's made for us to manage, to interact with. You know, in order to manage it, you have to interact with it. So that's why I say to manage, and that makes the most sense to me. So what are your thoughts, guys? I don't really, I'm not really sure. I'm just sort of, this is just sort of thought vomit, basically. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. But when, you, when you read your Bible and it talks about how we're the managers, we're supposed to take care of the world, we interact with it in the garden, we're talking to animals, we're, you know, wandering around, interacting with the whole world, and then you hear robotics and that robotics couldn't take off until we had until we gave them the embodied form okay and now they can interact with the world and now they can learn and now they can manage to me that says okay we're in a created system and that created system it supports my worldview of the created system of god what do you guys think and that's where i'm gonna leave it <laughs> so i don't kill the stuff too bad all right, just let me know, comment or at me, for the Christ, and I will see you guys on Monday. Just a little something to chew on. Bye.